Family, welcome to my IG live. For those who's watching on YouTube or those who's watching later on IG, I want to say thank you all for taking the time to listen. I just want to give everybody an opportunity who will be joining me live to come on in. But for those who's watching later, thank you so much for trusting me uh, and trusting my content uh, and seeing it as useful. I'm glad that it is useful, not abusive. <laughs> I'm glad it's uh, information that could benefit you. And so I really appreciate y'all for all the support and all that good stuff. So I'm giving some people an opportunity to come in, get your questions ready. Um, all those who joining me live right now, get, bro, what's good, family? My brother's in the building. What's going on, Drew? My balling brother right there. But if you want to join me live, you can join me face to face. Those who have questions, or you can just type in your questions. I would love to serve you all. Let me wave it. Everybody, come in. Thank you all so much for joining. Also, make sure y'all go to YouTube right now. Check out a great podcast that my brother and I did just now called the Way Out Podcast, done by myself, by my brother Jeff and myself. Hope y'all are blessed by that. So I'm going to give y'all an opportunity to come into the live on IG. If not, I'll go ahead and part ways and go and get some rest. But I kind of felt led to come here. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, just obey and see what God has in store and who he wants me to serve today on IG. And for those who's watching on YouTube, make sure you follow me at my coach Josh. And also check me out. Make sure you hit the bell over there on YouTube too because I do live Q&As over there as well. So what's up, everybody? Got some of the students in here. So if you want to join me live, you can join me face to face. What's going on, Jay? Or if you just got questions, type them in. And let's get right into it. So I'm going to give you an opportunity to come on in, get y'all's fingers ready so that I can serve you all today. But over there on Inst on YouTube, we talked about anxiety. I had a great talk with my brother Jeff about anxiety. We talked about the importance of one humbling themselves before they cast their care. So if you're struggling with anxiety, man, go to my YouTube channel right now. And uh, you'll see it. Jeff and I, you'll see a face of two brothers on there. Uh, and uh, click that video. It's great information and great content in there. And we also talked about our top three favorite carbs. And uh, that was very tough for me to find my top three carbs. But either way, I found it. So I'm give me, I'm just trying to stall. <laughs> give y'all an opportunity to get y'all's questions ready. But yeah. But I hope y'all are well. Hope y'all's June is doing good. Hope y'all's summer's going good. It has been extremely hot where I'm from. Just the other day, man, that thing was torching me, bro. I said, man, listen, you know you you know where you won't find me in eternity. You know won't find me in hell. Cause if I can barely what's going on, Princess Matt? If I can if I can barely get through humidity, I think hell is gonna probably be more humid than hot. Cause I think humidity is worse than heat. I just think it's gonna be like just unbearably humid. Enoch, what's going on? So I'm stalling. Just so I can give you an opportunity to get y'all's questions. But if there's no questions, man, I can go ahead and go. I can go and go make me something to eat or something. I can go get something to drink. I can go kick it with my wife. There's a lot of things I could do. <laughs> yeah, but hell is not where I'm trying to go. Definitely trying to go to heaven. I ain't even trying to go to heaven. It's already a done deal for your boy. But I tell you one thing, man. Summer, me and Summer are not good friends, man. I, I hate humidity. I sweat a lot. I'm a sweater. And, and so I just, I just, man, summer's just not for me. It's just, it's, it's winters for me, you know? Fall for me. It's the fall for me. It's definitely not summer. So, unless y'all just want to hear me just vent vent and talk, I can do that too. I'm just wave at the people I ain't waved at, man. That's me being disrespectful. I'm not trying to be disrespectful. I'm going to wave at everybody. Everybody who's joining me right now. But for those who are joining me right now, uh, feel free to either join me face-to-face, -face, live Q&A. If you want to join me face-to-face, -face, you got a question, or you can type your question in, and I'll be able to serve you all. And I just want to do a live Q&A, a fallen leadership, my leading of, my whole, of the spirit. And maybe, maybe it was just indigestion. Who knows? <laughs> but I'm, I'm going to see. Jay said the biggest what now? So I'm going to give you an opportunity. I'm gonna, oh, people are still coming in the room. So who am I to just leave right now when people are still coming in? Biggest lesson you learned in your first year of marriage. My husband and I are about eight months in. Good job. Y'all ain't quit yet. That's good. So the biggest lesson I, that I learned in my first year of marriage is, um, what was what would be the first lesson I learned in marriage? I think the biggest lesson I learned in marriage is, this is a marathon. This is a long journey. Take your time. Get to know each other. Um, give grace, because there's going to be some mistakes that's going to be made. We're not talking about major mistakes like infidelity, but make sure one thing I did when I came into my marriage, what I've learned in my marriage is not have not to put unrealistic expectations uh, on my wife to make sure that she's able to have the grace to grow uh, because he's a new husband. You are a new wife. 
I, me and my wife are toddlers. That's why you never seen me and my wife create videos of marital advice because we're still babies in this thing. And one thing that I've learned is, is to continuously give my wife grace to grow and allow myself to be graciously groomed and into the man beyond the groom phase and now in, into a, a, a husband. And so that's what I would say. Just be gracious, be kind. Be understanding. Make sure that you're uh, grounded and not in La La Land and not in the uh, uh, Lifetime movie world or the uh, Hallmark world where everything is is just oh everything's supposed to be like this. He's not supposed to smell. He's not supposed to do this. She not supposed. It's like no 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 no. Marriage is work. Marriage is dying to yourself every day. And the biggest lesson I learned is let's all embrace the grace that God is giving us for us to grow into greater versions of husband and wife. And so that was the biggest lesson I learned is that uh, be ready to be inconvenienced, be ready for the unexpected and utilize what you've learned in singleness to get you through. And that's why I tell people, and if y'all know me, I'm the uh, a part of my ministry to talk to singles. There's other things that God has gifted me um, to talk about, but it's singles is that, that you're going to have to make sure that you plan and develop and allow the Holy Spirit to make you while you're single because marriage is work. If you're barely dying to yourself in singleness, you're not going to be able to die towards your wife or for your husband in order for them to live. And, and, and I realize that I'm just a, so, a resource. And the beautiful thing about it is, no, this is the biggest lesson. Here's the biggest lesson right here that I've learned in marriage and that I've earned from my marriage so far. It's letting the Holy Spirit govern the marriage. Let the Holy Spirit do what he... Most people think marriage is just between you and the wife and you and the husband. No, in a godly marriage, it's a marriage between you, the wife, and this Holy Spirit. The issue is many people are married with devils, though. <laughs> they don't even got the Holy Spirit at work in their marriage. They got devils at working in marriage. But when you allow the Holy Spirit to work in a marriage, it's beautiful, man. Like, it, it don't matter. The Holy Spirit is what confirms things. The Holy Spirit is what... I don't have to worry about leading my wife because she knows I'm led. So the greatest lesson I've learned and the greatest lesson that I've earned from was allowing the Holy Spirit to govern our marriage. The greatest, the greatest, the greatest um, lesson is to let the Holy, involve the Holy Spirit in your marriage, especially men, involve him so that you can lead. And in your, because when you're led by the Spirit of God, it makes your wife not even second guess that you, like, like if you make a decision, she knows he already talked to God about it. And for her, if she has any type of concerns or she needs to uh, communicate something to her husband, she has the Holy Spirit to kind of alleviate some of the excess emotion that may cause the man to be a little bit more uh, uh, in his emotion as well. And so that's the beauty about the Holy Spirit. A man needs the Holy Spirit involved so that he can make wise decisions that the, that the marriage doesn't capsize because of bad decisions. The woman needs the Holy Spirit so that the man does make a mistake or the man doesn't match the expectation, she can allow the fellowship of the Holy Spirit to alleviate any type of heightened emotions or flustering emotions that may cause her husband to be closed off towards her. So allowing the Holy Spirit in the marriage has made marriage in more enjoyable. It really does. I can't imagine doing this without the Holy Spirit. So that's the biggest lesson. The greatest lesson. Number two, uh, the same grace that you was given, give to your husband or wife. And most importantly, allow the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost to God. And I think your marriage would be all right. And um, just die to yourself, man. I'm three years in, and that's pretty much <laughs> the gist of what I've learned is to let the Holy Spirit guide and 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 let and let and give my wife grace to grow and not and and not be um because I think what mess up a lot of people is that they have all these great expectations, these big expectations about marriage. They watch the lifetime, they watch all these movies, or or they got negative uh uh, feelings from all this stuff and they have these false and some men have false expectations about their wife that she's just going to be this uh, 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 Porn star that she's going to do all the moves in a book. 
You know what I'm saying? That she's Miss Karma Sutra. That they, they, that's what they, that false expectation. And they want to have that false expectation because they want a woman to fulfill their lust. See, the issue is in marriage, it's not about making lust. It's about making love. Love takes work. Love is not, we're not even talking about sex. We're talking about love. You can't go into marriage with lust, nor can you go into marriage with false expectations, expecting that man to solve or fix what Jesus should have already fixed. There are certain things in singleness that that Christ was meant to complete, to 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 to, to alleviate, so that it doesn't become a, a missile that shoots down your marriage. And so, uh, fellas, you, you in your singleness, get get with God, fellas, with the Spirit of God. Uh, uh, get rid of those issues. Don't develop false expectations that your wife is going to be doing all these moves or that your wife's supposed to make you a five course meal every day. When I came into my marriage, I had no expectation of my wife cooking. I had no expectation. She's a great cook, but I'm not going to make her cook every day. What kind of, what kind of man is that? No, I'm not going to make her do anything every day because this is how I'm supposed to. No, 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 no. I want another thing that I've learned in marriage. I serve with no expectation. One thing I will tell you is serve him with no expectations, because when you serve a person with the same level of expectation and uh, that matches the level of your service, you will always be disappointed because you're only serving to, to receive. No, it's blessed to give than to receive. So one thing that I would advise that I've learned is I don't ask my wife for nothing in return. I give her my best. And I let God handle the rest. I don't, I don't, I don't expect her because she's not my source. She's a resource, but she's not my source. And so when you have that resource mind, when it comes to a marriage, then you won't put source pressure on a resource. You won't put God expectations on a man or a woman who is not built to handle what only God can handle. Hope to help. I think we have some more questions too. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Yo, hey coach, Enoch, what's going on? Biggest lesson you learned. Okay, we okay, there we go. Oh, I didn't wave at y'all. My bad. Y'all I'm about to wave at y'all right now. Oh, y'all talking to my wife? No, it's been no, no, laugh like no, it's been challenging. Yeah, marriage is challenging. It is not easy. What I mean by challenging is not because uh it's not enjoyable, it just requires Marriage is like a magnifying glass. It only reveals <laughs> what has yet to be healed. <laughs> it sometimes revealed what has yet to be healed. And sometimes it just reveals a uh, uh, um, a pride in the healing. Sometimes you be like, oh, I think I know what I'm doing. So I've been healed from this. I've been good. I've been through this. I ain't had done it. And all of a sudden when marriage tests you, you realize you ain't as strong as you thought you was. Marriage is a daily or like... I treat my marriage like my relationship with God. I ain't there yet. And if I know I'm not there yet, I'm not going to be on my side thinking that I'm got it all together and be like, no, you got to get this together. No, I worry about working on me. If I work on me and worry and let the Holy Spirit deal with her and whatever issue, or whatever, I'm not going to sit there and nitpick. No, am I going to sit there and, 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 and uh, woe is me. It's like, nah, man, it's a slow, it's a slow burn. I got a question right here. Let me see. What to do when someone breaks your heart? Um, they wanted to be with you one week and the next week they take away everything and want to be your friend. First off, discernment is key when it comes to any type of fellowship with anyone or engage with anyone, right? Uh, because you have to love your heart. You have to uh, respect your heart enough, uh, love yourself enough to protect yourself at all costs, right? And what we can do is we can't erase the heartbreak, right? Okay, he said, do you cut them off? Yes, you cut them off. Uh, because a double-minded man is unstable in all their ways, right? You can't trust someone who's inconsistent. You can't trust someone who's more consistent than being inconsistent than being consistent, right? You have to be able to say, okay, count my losses, learn from this, and earn from this. Don't just learn from it, earn from it, right? And so the advice that I would give you is this, is that... Um, I would then begin to assess how someone even got to breaking your heart in the first place. Forgive them, get over them, and let's go forward. But now we should do inventory and investigate how do we allow this person in the gate, right? How did someone get clearance into this to, to this uh, um, uh, vulnerable place in my life to even have the power to break it, right? 
And, oh, yeah, that's right. And then they come around like they're nothing. Happened. Those, those individuals, we live in such a lover of self-culture. The Bible talks about that people will be lovers of themselves in these last days, right? And so when you have a lover of self type of culture, people don't even really know that they're hurting somebody's heart. People don't even know that they're that they're a uh, 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 new school in an old school um, world. And what I mean by that is some people really get bored easily. Some people don't have a long attention span. And if people have a short attention span online, then what makes you, you think they don't have a short attention span offline? Meaning that if you're an old school gal or you're an old school guy and you really want to go the long route, you don't want to go the highway, you want to go the byway and you want to go uh, 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 and take your time in certain things. People who want to get places quick and they don't have a long, uh, they have a short attention span, they're not going to, they're not going to want to sit there and stand and try to understand you and get to know you. So now you have to understand that I think more highly of the individual than I thought, that I think of myself more lowly than I thought. What did I do to give this person even the access to break my heart? Because when you begin to realize that people are flawed and people are narcissistic to a degree and people are lovers of self, it makes you guard your heart even better or even more. Because you realize that most people are not equipped with the tender hands enough to be able to manage one's heart. That's why I always tell people, um, um, give people your love, but don't give people your heart. People deserve access to your love. A high fives of love. Away from across the room's love. Uh, uh, oh, you good? That's love. Some people don't deserve that kind of love, but not everybody deserves access to my heart, right? And so that's right. When you, That's why when you feel like you have been off post, that's why you get back on the post. You know what I'm saying? You can't be no big man shooting threes. You got to get back on the post. You got to get back to what you built for, right? And, that, and don't beat yourself up. Even the greats have fallen. Jesus got betrayed, right? And, but the word of God also said that Jesus didn't entrust himself with everyone because he knew everyone's heart. He knew everyone's heart. He knew everyone's heart wasn't for him. And you have to realize the difference between those who only come to tend you as a tree uh, versus those who who come just for your shade and fruit. Some people only come for your shade and fruit. They only come for what you offer. But wait till winter comes. Wait till fall comes. And when you start losing your leaves and they no longer have shade and you know, and your fruit start drying up and what brought them to you is no longer there, those people gone. And so you have to realize that's just the world we live in. That's just how people are. And, and, and guard your heart at all costs. So now you got to get a sheet of paper and, and, and investigate how did this person get within the gate? How did I let them in? Was it because of my infatuation? Was it because of my impatience? Was it because I didn't do a thorough check? Is it because they seem like the Christian person? They seem like a good person? It's whatever. But at the same time, you got to assess how sensitive am I to the spirit of God? Am I am I uh, 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 at walking in step with him? Am I acknowledge him in all of my ways? Am I open to his guidance? Did he tell me no and I didn't listen? Then that's when you humble yourself and audit yourself and develop yourself and get over yourself as far as forgiving yourself and go with God in your new self. And then next thing you know, you're good. Infatuation and sex will do it every time. See, see, no, no sex and lust is better than sex that's in, in regards to love and a marriage. Nothing compares because you know that person wants you. You know that person loves you for you, not for your assets. No pun intended. Right. So get some word, get in, get into your word, understand infatuation and uh, and get become content in your singleness. Listen, one thing I tell people all the time, um, level up if you want to level up. Like people are asking God to bring something to them. They're asking God, bring me my man, bring me my husband, bring me my wife versus bring me up to my wife, bring me up to my husband, bring me up to this career, bring me up, meaning build me up, develop me to the person that's able to steward at that level. Then you will see value in your singleness. Then you'll be like, oh, singleness is a gift. Marriage is not more of a gift than singleness. That's why people don't maximize the singleness because they don't, they don't see singleness for what it really is. Singleness is a gift. It's a preparatory gift. It, it, it enables you to develop the character, the fortitude, the understanding you need to do what you got to do. Thank y'all so much. I'm glad y'all enjoying it. Let me make sure I didn't skip any questions. I'm waving some folks. Thank you, Lakeisha. Thank you. Thank you.
Yes, you're right. I mean, yeah, we just got we just got to understand the value of 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 singleness. What's up, fam? Lewis, what's going on, bro? Oh, got another question. I think I said. I'm just gonna give me another question. A fool says. What to do when someone keeps persistent and stepping over your boundaries to try and pursue even after blocking them and I, oh, even after blocking them and praying about them? I don't know why I can't see all the questions. What's up, my brother? I got some people from Broward in the building. Good to see you, man. Hope you're doing well, my brother. You doing well, son? Hope you're doing well, man. What to do when someone keeps persistent and stepping over uh, oh, thank you for watching, bro. Tell Yvonne I said, oh, she she watching right now. Tell Yvonne I said hello. What to do when someone keeps per, uh, being persistent and stepping over your boundaries to try and pursue even after blocking them? Listen, man, um, you stick with your boundary. Some people don't believe it until they see it. And some people really got that 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 ambition, that 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 zeal that says I would get her in time. So what you do, fam, is just stay with your boundary. Uh, what to do when someone keeps stepping ba stepping boundaries? They can't understand no when you aren't convicted from the Holy Spirit. You just stick with your boundary. You owe nobody no explanation. Uh, if they start getting crazy, get you a, uh, what's that thing called? Uh, what's that thing called? Uh, I forgot what it's called. Hey, anyway, man, you, you got to leave me alone, man. Get you a 9 and a, or a 45, you know what I'm saying? And just stay consistent. That's all you can do. Uh, but if they stepping over your boundaries, then that's when you, this is what I would do just to make sure I would, I would say, okay, Hey man, let me clearly communicate my boundaries. Maybe my in between the line communication of my boundaries wasn't clear enough. Maybe you're not into the spirit of God. They really receive what I'm trying to show you. Sometimes you got to say your boundaries versus show your boundaries. So say and show, uh, uh, and so say to them, say to them, talk to the individual, say, Hey, here are my boundaries. I need you to respect these or I'm going to the authorities. Right. And then. Be consistent in showing your boundary. Don't, don't, if, if, if a high is too much for them, then you can't say hello to them. Just be like, you know, and just keep moving, right? But that's what I would do. Say and show. And, and, and then, uh, uh, and then go from there. Uh, but people are going to be persistent, but they'll get the message eventually. Sasha says, why can't I allow good things to flow without overthinking or being worrisome? Good question. Let me make sure that's all your question. Okay. Why can't I... Why can't I allow good things to flow without overthinking or being worse? And well, overthinking is the fruit of, <clears throat> it could be a fruit of a lot of different things. Let me just look at your question again. Why can't I allow good things to flow without, well, self-sabotaging self behavior comes through one of two ways. Uh, the ultimate way is due to a lack of, of, uh, of feeling adequate, right? A lot of people feel inadequate. They don't feel like I'd rather self-sabotage some good because I am more afraid of success than I am of not succeeding or not trying. So what happens to most people, they self-sabotage it because maybe I'm not good enough for this thing, right? Maybe I'm not good enough. And then when overthinking gets in, now you start seeing, looking for the qualifiers. What qualifies me to have this good thing? Do you understand none of us deserve anything good? For it's the goodness of God that draws us to repentance, right? And so what you have to uh, do is gird yourself up in confidence in Christ. And what I mean by that is saying, hey, if God called me to this, like for me, I'm not qualified for half the stuff I've ever done. <laughs> but God has qualified me over years. And well, I'm so skilled at what I do. I'm so good at what I do. And I'm so submitted in the good one that makes me good at what I do that I'm able to just say, hey, God, have your way with me, right? But when you start feeling inadequate, you start sabotaging things because you rather sabotage it because you don't want to be embarrassed in success. You don't want to be embarrassed. So the best way not to be embarrassed is to bury. And what's best, what, what's going to keep me from being embarrassed is for me to bury it and deny it, sabotage it so no one can ever see that I wasn't good enough. But you're going to make mistakes. Right. So you got to allow good things to flow in your life and not be worried about it, especially if it's given by God. My wife's a good thing, but I'm not going to be pressed every minute about am I a good husband? It, it, imagine how annoyed she would be if every minute on the minute or every hour on the hour, I'm over here asking, am I doing good as a husband? Am I being good? No, 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 no. That's going to be annoying. 
The thing you got to do is to say, okay, I've practiced. I've invested in myself. God has called me to this. I am qualified for this by the help of God, but I'm going to stay humbled under the hand of God because I know that he will, establish, he will establish me and strengthen me and then go forward from there, right? But don't, <coughs> excuse me, but don't get so caught up in overanalyzing like I used to. Well, will people receive me? What if I mess up? It's like, man, when you are submitted with God and you in uh, in awe of God and you constantly make yourself available for the anointing of God to flow through you, you'll be shocked about the rooms that God's placed you in. So you are doing one or two things, right? Um, either it's the fear of success or you feel inadequate, right? And what you have to do is find your confidence in God and saying, if God made me for this, if God qualified me for this, then I'm going to do it. And be realistic with the idea that you're going to make mistakes along the way. So worry is a waste of time. And so what I would do is I would find the root to the reason why this is difficult. You said, that's correct. The embarrassment. Word, I appreciate you. God is the key. To, that's it. Listen, man, I, don't, I, don't, I, ain't the, I ain't the most eloquent. I ain't the most handsome. I ain't the most uh, 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 accomplished, quote unquote, in the world. Oh, my wife said I got to wave. Wave at my wife now. I got to wave. My wife's in the building. But, I, but I'm not going to sit there and be, well, oh my God. Like, I don't care how I dress. I don't care about my haircut. I don't be able to be caring. Because, listen, if people was r going miles into the wilderness to see John the Baptist, who was eating uh, locusts and honey and had uh, wool skin, I'm not sitting saying you don't care about your appearance, but I worry more about the anointing than I do my appearance. Because I know the anointing destroys the yoke. So don't worry about being embarrassed. That's right. Worry is a waste of time. Don't worry about being embarrassed. Because you're going to fail. But failure is a part of success, family. So don't sabotage things because you rather sabotage it and, 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 and not be revealed or put in position to be embarrassed. But those who are unafraid of being embarrassed, they get a lot of things done. And they accomplish a lot of things. And they're very successful. Let me go to the next question. My brother, what's up, family? How can you handle toxic family members without losing your cool with them? Great. Great question, family. This is the advice that I would give you. Is don't meet toxic with toxic. Meet toxic with, with, with the right temperature. And the Bible says, kindness, uh, uh, kindness will heap a coal of fire on a person's head. The goal is, I, I set my temp temperature before I'm set in other people's climates. I set my temperature before I am set in other people's environments, right? What I mean by is this. The work I put in with spending time with God, the work that I put in with, with gratitude and, and thanking God when I wake up, before I leave my house, I thank God for about 15 different things. And that, that, that puts my body in sync, my mind, my soul, and spirit to realize that I am better off than I could have been. That God is still good to me when I don't deserve it. And the joy of the Lord is my strength. So that when I leave my house, I don't already caught a vibe. So nobody can't change my vibe. Because I caught a vibe already. My vibe is joy. My vibe is gratitude. So no matter who I meet that's toxic, they're going to have to feel my temperature, baby. That's what I say. You, got, you, you, either, you come to my temperature. I don't go to your temperature. And if you don't want to come to my temperature, then I'm going to dust the dust off my feet and go somewhere else. So if you if you're not set on I don't, my wife don't like the way I be having a house set on a certain number that she don't be like. But I, I set a temperature. I'm if, if the ideal temperature for me is about 65, <laughs> 65, I'm cool. If another person of a toxic family member is set to 78, I ain't going to meet you at 78. Either you come to me or I'm leaving your environment. And the goal is, is to go into every environment chill. Cool, joyful. And when you go into certain rooms, you will be able to raise the temperature of the room or bring the temperature down of the room, right? He's cool. I'm cold. Hey, but, but that's marriage. That's work. You know what I'm saying? Wow, brother Yvonne says that verbatim. This really resonated with me. Thank you, brother. We brothers, brother. You know I'm here no matter when you need me, man. I got you. But that's what I do, man. I set my temperature on joy. I set my temperature on gratitude. It's hard to break down a grateful person. When you, cut, when you catch a grateful vibe and you leave the house and you're grateful, it's hard to tell that person down. 
And most people, if you're grateful, you'll have a better response from people because they want the attitude you have. And if they're toxic, then let them be toxic. Some people got to learn lessons from your absence. Sometimes to balance people out, you got to, in order, that's, I say this quote all the time, don't be, don't always be present. Sometimes you got to balance people out with your absence. Because sometimes people just want to find someone to pick on and whatever. Sometimes you got to disappear. I don't mind being absent. You know what I'm saying? I don't mind being absent. And, and that's just what it is. And sometimes people get the message when you're gone. I'd rather them get the message because I left to help me than for me to try to force a message on them and then I'm ready to receive. Hope to help, family. Uh, here we go. Queen of All says, uh-oh. I sent a question in your DM, but I deleted it because I believe I already knew what you would say. What, what was your question? But but if you already know, I think you already know. Ah, let me see if anybody else. Uh, let me see if anybody else. I sent a question in your DM, but I deleted it because I believe I already know what you. Yeah, I'm pretty. I'm pretty. I'm pretty consistent, and I, ho I hope you. I'm glad you got an answer regardless. Hey, everybody's waving. Let me scroll up see if I missed any questions. Uh, Alex says, let me see. Let me scroll up so I ain't skip nobody because I don't want no smoke. Miss Dazzy, I'm good, Josh. You skip me. I got time for maybe maybe two or three more, and I gotta go. I just felt led to come on and then I got to be obedient. What to do when someone keeps stepping? Okay, I already said that. Uh, Ella says, I find that I am struggling with pursuing my purpose. Every time I go to touch my workshops and products, I freeze and my mind shuts down. What should I do? Is it spirit? Man, yeah. Um, the, the, the number one thing the enemy wants to distract you from is your purpose. Because your purpose was designed um, to, to inspire and to expire. It was designed to inspire others to pursue their purpose and it was created to expire the work of the enemy in someone else's life. That's what your purpose is for, to inspire and expire, right? So the devil don't want you to inspire other people. The enemy doesn't want you to inspire the people. Demons don't want you to inspire the people. The people that are controlled demonically don't want you to inspire other people, nor do they want you ex to expire the plots and schemes of the devil in people. That's why people who are aware of their purpose and acknowledge God often and allow the anointing of God to always be a rushing river through them due to them not deviating to sinful habits and contaminating the flow, then these individuals will be beacons of light and pillars of salt uh, uh, that will preserve and that will bring other people to Christ, right? And so you got to understand that this is a demonic plot and you got to think three moves ahead. And what I would do, what I do is I, you have a 30 second to two minute window to break into the, the, the oasis, the peaceful place of productivity. And you can't defeat the devil through desire. You defeat him through discipline. So what you got to do is say, I'm going to work on this no matter what. So what you do is you get your workshops and your product and you do it. Now, you got to have a strong why. You got to have a strong who. People always say, what's your why? No, I ask people, what's your who? Who's your, who's your who to determine what you'll do? My who is God. I got to be held accountable for not doing what I'm supposed to do. I got to stand before God one day. I don't got time to worry about a devil this or a devil that or being embarrassed over here. I don't got time to worry about that. I got to stand before God one day and I will be held accountable for what I did in this body, period, like the young people say. So I do it for God, not because of, of oh, he's going to put me in hell. No, because he's too good. Number one, his goodness draws me to repentance. Number two. He, he, uh, he wants to create with me. God's a creator. In the beginning, God created. <laughs> He's a creator. And so you got to find, you got to have a big who. And that big who is G-O-D. I do it for him. I want him to be glorified because of just how good he is to me. And, and, and knowing that he wants to be a partner with what he's placed in you, right? And number two, what's your why? Who do you, why do you need to do this? And that will get you going. But you have a 20 second, a, third, a 20 second, a two minute window to defeat the devil through discipline. And then you'll find this burst of, wow, creativity flowing. Um, but, you, but, but you don't defeat the devil through desire. You defeat him through discipline. So it is spiritual. So you got to find the root. Are you, are, are you, uh, do you feel inadequate? Do you feel like you're incompetent? Do you feel like uh, uh, you're not good enough? Man, am I the best off in the world? No. Am I the best speaker in the world? No, I don't desire to be the best. I desire to be the most anointed. That's all I care about. Everybody else can pursue being the best. I just want to pursue being the most anointed because that means I get to destroy. God gets to use me to destroy more yokes. 
So pursue it anyway. Discipline, discipline, discipline. And let me tell you something. There's nothing, there's not too many feelings greater than feeling the feelings of finished. Finish. And there ain't too much good, better feelings than that than feeling the funds from something finished. You can't get paid from ha for half done stuff. Ooh. No one gets paid from half done stuff, family. So what I'm saying is if you want generational wealth, if you want to pass something down to your children's children, you, you got to finish. You got to be faithful. You got to be dil diligent because there ain't nothing like feeling the feelings of finish. And there's so there definitely ain't much about nothing better than not too much better than feeling the funds of something that's finished. Well, I got to go, y'all. I love y'all. I got one more question. And I'm out. I think I, didn't, I hope I ain't skip nobody. Shush, I, uh, Shush, I'll go ahead and answer your question. I got to go. Uh, how do you know when you should change jobs, country, town, and vibe when the Holy Spirit leads you to do it? The more you get to know him, the more you get to know what to do. I'm telling you. It sounds, I don't want to be the type of preacher or speaker that be like, here's five plans and know when to move. No, 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 no. no. Number, you, until you do number one, you won't know what step number two is because not every not every step two is the same. My step two might be different than your step two. Mm. But step one will always be the same. And that's to humble yourself before God and, and sensitive, sensitize, if that's even a word, make your spirit man sensitive and be open to be led by the Spirit of God. I'm telling you, because every step two is different. Every step two is different. But step one is the same, and that's going to God for yourself. And saying, God, I desire to be led by you. God, I desire to be in your will. Holy Spirit will lead and direct you. There you go, my brother. That's another preacher in the building. Drew, that's right. Holy Spirit will lead. He will. He will. It ain't no question. He will lead if you let him lead. Because if I, the issue, the reason why I don't do too many step fives, and I do a lot of acronym stuff, but not all step twos are the same. The, the Holy Spirit step two for me will be different than his step two for you. But step one is going to God for yourself and learning from him. But I love y'all. I'll see y'all next time. Uh, I'll post this on YouTube. So those who are watching on YouTube, thank you so much for watching. Everyone's watching on Instagram on YouTube. Check out, if for those watching on Instagram, check out the links in my description box, in my bio. Uh, books, card games, resources, tools, all those things are available to you. Uh, if you're watching on YouTube, links in the description box or the comment section. Engage with me. Let's see how we can partner in ways. And uh, excuse me. And I look forward to serving you all. So seven books. Oh, seven books? Yeah, seven books. Oh, and what I'm working on right now. I can't wait to get to y'all. Love y'all too, man. But go to my website, IamUnplugged.com. Link in the bio, link in the description box below. I love y'all. See y'all next video. Peace.